Hey, Chapel Street Church. Welcome to 23 Days with God. We're excited because over the next 23 days together, we're going to be on a journey where we grow in our knowledge of who God is. Not just head knowledge, but heart knowledge. We grow in our understanding of God's love for us and our ability to love Him in return. And each time we get together over these, uh, these 23 days of devotions, we're going to begin with meditation on God's Word. So let's do that together. Let's spend a few moments meditating on this passage from the Word of God. You know, in that passage we just meditated on from Matthew, Jesus had asked the question, what's the greatest commandment in all the Bible? And he answers by saying, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. He's quoting uh, what we call the Shema from the Old Testament. And he adds to it, the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And you've probably heard that before and read that before. But I want to take a few moments and focus on what Jesus says when he says to love God with all your mind. What does that mean? Of course, we probably understand what it means to love God with our heart and soul. That makes sense. There's, it's the emotional center of who we are. With our strength, we understand that loving someone is not just sentimentality, but acting and doing things to demonstrate love. It takes effort. But what does it mean to love God with our mind? Well, maybe you think it means, well, you, you think about that person. You think about God. You, if it, loving someone that, that's a family member or a friend with your mind means remembering them, thinking fondly of them, and that's probably part of it. But is that what Jesus meant? What does it mean for us to love God with our minds? The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 12 that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That means something about the way that we think has an impact on changing us. And loving God with our mind is more than just sentimental memories or recalling the good times with God. Listen to what Paul says in these two prayers in the book of Colossians and Philippians. We pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every good way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. That's Colossians 1 verse 10. And in Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 he says, this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. So loving God with our minds means having a growing understanding of who God is. It doesn't just mean we memorize some facts from Bible class about God and then think about those things. It means we are ever growing and expanding in our knowledge of the depth and riches of God's love. That's a beautiful concept. Some of you may know that I love the writing of C.S. Lewis. In the second book of the Chronicles of Narnia, there's this passage where Lucy comes back to Narnia and she sees Aslan again after having not seen him for a while and she exclaims, Aslan, you're bigger. And he goes, no child, I'm not. But every year that you grow, you will find me bigger. I love that story because it's a metaphor for how there's always more of God for us. And as we grow, we grow and experience more of who God is. He's infinite. So we never come to the end of him. And therefore, loving God with our minds means growing in our understanding of who he is. How sad then that so many Christians stop growing in their understanding of God. And perhaps those of us who think we have God all figured out are not loving him very well because there's always more of him to understand and to discover. So in the next several weeks, every day when we get together, we're going to meditate on Scripture. And not only that, but we're going to ponder what that means about the character and nature of God and how that changes us as we grow in our understanding of who God is. A.W. Tozer, in his classic work, The Knowledge of the Holy, said the most important fact about any of us is what comes into our minds when we think about God. And if you pause for a minute and reflect on that quote, if you think of God as an absentee landlord, he made the world, but he's not very involved, That's going to impact how you pray and how you live. If you think of God as an angry stepfather in the sky who is about to get you if you step out of line, that impacts how you live. Your concept of God, though you don't always realize this, has everything to do with how you live and interact in the world. So loving God with our minds means growing our understanding of Him so that we live more like Him in the world. That's our aim. That's our goal in these 23 days with God. Now, of course, 
growing in our understanding of God is a lifelong pursuit. We won't come to the end of God in 23 days, but it'll be a good start as we journey together to reflect on the goodness and the character and nature of who God is, and that knowing Him, we could love Him and experience His love more deeply.